Hey guys, Pastor Jurgen here. I'm so glad you're tuning into one of our powerful messages that is guaranteed to absolutely elevate your life to another level. At Awaken, we only want to preach fresh, real, powerful to help you grow stronger in your walk with God, develop your faith so you can take more territory. I'm praying that God blesses you and enriches your soul as you listen to this amazing Word from God. God bless you. You guys excited to be in church? I'm glad to be in church. I'm glad to live in San Diego. Every time I walk outside, I say, thank you, Jesus. No matter what's wrong in your life, at least you live here. I used to tell people that, like, like when the Chargers would lose, for example, to like Seattle or something. I say, at least they get to come home to San Diego and they got to stay in Seattle. You know what I mean? Kind of like the Seahawks, actually. But we live in the greatest city, the greatest church, greatest country in the world. There's something to be thankful about. And thankfulness is a key to living a successful life. Amen. Well, I don't know about you guys, but when I was growing up, especially in like junior high, high school age, <laughs> if you ever want to shout out, just say like junior high or high school, woo, people, people scream. <laughs> but when I got to that age, I started to realize that there's like gossip and stuff. You know, like, like I started to realize that, that you could talk to somebody face to face and they would treat you one way, but then they would go talk to somebody else about you and they would talk about you in a whole nother way. Like to your face, they would, they would like you, but behind your back, they would stab you. They would treat every situation in a way that would benefit them and not anybody else. And so back when we were growing up, we used to call those people two-faced, did you guys call them that? They still do that, Deshaun? Yeah, Pastor Deshaun? Sometimes stuff I say is outdated. That's why I call Pastor Deshaun, Pastor Sterling. You know, like I just started backing into parking spots. I know you all have been doing that for years, but I just started doing that. Like I'm kind of old school at times. I'm old school at times. But we used to call those people two-faced. And being two-faced is not a good way to make friends. It's not a good thing to be called. But today I'm going to redeem two-faced. So why don't you right now say, I'm two-faced. <laughs> I love it. Every service people are like, wait, wait, wait. I don't trust you yet. Don't say it yet. So thank you for those of you that trust me already. But the rest of you, you're going to be screaming it by the end of the service. The title of my message is two-faced. 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 So in the beginning, the Bible says that God created man, male and female, he created them. And little did I know that whenever, the, how important that verse would be today, that God created man, male and female. I just never thought about it. I never thought that would be an issue, but today I'm thankful for that verse. But he created man, male and female, he created them. And, and before he created them, he said, let us make them in our image and in our likeness. In other words, we want to, I want to make man like us. And so in the beginning, God made you and I like him, to be like him in his image and his likeness. And then Adam and Eve kind of screwed things up in the garden and deceit came in and sin came in. And so God had to launch a redemption plan. He had to launch a redemption plan that was maybe a little bit different than what he originally intended because in the beginning he made you like him, but when that didn't work, he realized he might need to make him like you. And so that's when heaven invaded earth in the, by way of Jesus Christ, and the Bible says that God literally made himself like you to redeem you so that he can make you like him again. Pastor Colin's already two-faced already. So when it didn't work out the first way, he had a redemption plan, and he sent him to be like you. This is what the Bible says in Philippians 2, 5 to 7. It said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. He knew he was God. He knew he could be equal with God, yet, but made himself of no reputation taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. In the, begin, in the beginning, God made us in his likeness. In the New Testament, God made him in our likeness. That, like, that word likeness has the same definition. So Jesus literally left his heavenly 
place and came to earth to become like you and to become like me so that he could redeem us, so that he could recapture dominion and authority, which he first sent out for us to have. But he, but, but he knew that, that him going to the cross, Jesus going to the cross, the Bible says he made a public spectacle of, of the enemy, nailing all your accusations to the cross so that you could be saved, so you could live eternity with him. But God knew that even his crucifixion, his blood, that you would need more if you were to sustain your salvation and if you were to overcome evil and live a victorious life. He knew you would need more even than his own blood, which is powerful. His blood can set you free. But he knew you needed more, so he sent him, self, by way of the Holy Spirit. It's Holy Spirit month, so I thought I'd talk about the Holy Ghost today a little bit. So in order for us to sustain our salvation and overcome evil and win and take dominion in this life, God knew he had to send himself, the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, to live in you, to live with you, and to live on you. John 14, 17 says, The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him. For he dwells with you and will be in you, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. And so God sent the Holy Spirit to live among you and to live in you. The reason he did that is because Jesus was just one person. The Holy Ghost can go everywhere. So you can have power over there. You can have power over there. They can have power in Brazil. They can have power in London. They can have power in Canada because the Holy Spirit can go anywhere. Jesus is just one person. So now the Holy Spirit is among you, and now he's in you, but Pastor John, you said he could also be upon you. How does he do that? Let me just tell you. Matthew 3, 11. John the Baptist, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Now, when we do baptisms here in service, right over there, there's a little pool, nice and warm, a little jacuzzi, and when you go in there to get baptized, if you'll notice, we will fully immerse you in the water. When you get fully immersed in water, the water gets on you. When the Holy Spirit comes to baptize you, you will get fully immersed in the Holy Spirit, and he will get on you. So now he's not just with you. Now he's not just in you. Now he's on you. So now when you pray for somebody, you don't got to just lay your hands on somebody. You're laying the hands of the Holy Ghost on somebody. So when you touch him, it's like now he's in you he's around you and he's on you it's called the baptism of the holy spirit acts 1 8 you shall receive power when the holy spirit comes upon you he wants to come upon you and when he when he comes upon you when you get baptized in the holy spirit he comes and he brings gifts because he's a good God. He likes to bring gifts. Nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, the Bible says. He gives you a language that you've never learned before, so you stop messing up your own life. <laughs> he gives you the ability to interpretate those tongues. He gives you the ability to discern spirits. Have you ever walked into a place and you're like, something's off in here. Something's weird in here. Or you're walking in the mall and someone mad dogs you for no reason. And that's a demon recognizing you, that you got the Holy Ghost on the inside of you. You ever, you ever, someone ever give you a compliment and you're like, that just didn't seem right. That was actually a dig, not a compliment. It's called discerning of spirits. <laughs> so he comes with nine gifts, faith, prophecy, knowledge, wisdom, miracles, healings. That's what you have access to when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Now you can do all of those things whenever you feel it to be necessary. So you don't have to beg God for a gift of the Spirit to come on you once you get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Because the gifts of the Spirit don't come on you, they come out of you. The rivers of living waters will come out of your heart. <clears throat> the Bible says this in Luke 17, 20. It says, the kingdom of God does not come with obser observation, nor will they say, see here, or see there. For indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. So wherever you go, the kingdom goes with you, and you have access to all nine gifts all the time. And let me, see, let me tell you, those gifts aren't just for you, although you can use them for you, but those gifts are going to be dispersed and to be given away to the people of God 
for healing and breakthrough and words of knowledge and wisdom and all that kind of stuff, you have access to all those kinds of things. And if you don't know what gift you want to use, Pastor Deshaun, maybe you're praying for somebody to get healed or praying for a demon to leave, and you're like, what gift is this? Just take authority. Because authority isn't a gift the Holy Spirit gave you. Authority is a position that you hold. You always have access to authority. You are seated as an heir with Christ Jesus in heavenly places. You have authority. The Bible says he's given you all authority over all the powers of the enemy. So you can use your authority to cause the devil to leave or sickness to leave or things to shift or move in your life. You can just use your authority. Don't get all caught up in what gift am I using. Just use Jesus. Just use the Holy Ghost. He wants to be unleashed. So now you are equipped and empowered to be two-faced, natural and supernatural. You are natural and supernatural. You are 100% human, but you got 100% of God on the inside of you by the name of the Holy Spirit. So now you can be two-faced. Say, I'm two-faced. Come on, it's getting better. You're starting to trust me. It's getting better. But you are the only being in the universe, check this, the only being in the universe that can operate in these two realms, in the natural and the supernatural. God chose you as a New Testament, spirit-filled believer to be able to operate in these two realms and have authority in both of these realms, which makes you God's highest creation, God's highest creation. So that's why you can go and you can eat two fish and five loaves, a natural thing, and then you can multiply those same fish and two loaves, a spiritual thing. That's why you can experience a rainstorm and feel the rain and feel the wet, a physical thing, but then you can speak to those clouds and tell them to shut up, a spiritual thing, because you can operate in two worlds. And you might be saying, well, isn't that what Jesus did? How do we do that? Well, Jesus was your example of what you could do. The Bible says you can do what he can do and more things you can do if you believe. That's why you or your friend can feel sickness or feel pain, a physical thing, but then you can lay your hands on somebody and they can be healed, a spiritual thing. The reason that a spiritual thing overcomes a physical thing is because a spiritual thing created the physical thing. And a creator always has authority over his creation. And so, so the unseen created the seen, the immaterial, the material. That's why you have to be two-faced in your life if you want to live victoriously. Because if you're just looking to the flesh, you're not going to live victoriously. Sometimes you have to access heaven. Sometimes you have to access what's inside of you, the Holy Spirit, the kingdom of God. This is why it works, Psalm 8, 3 to 6, the amplified version because it's conference week. It says, when I see, this is David, this is David talking to God, when I see and consider your heavens and the work of your fingers, David is like blown away by the creation of God. And just a side note, it says that, the, that, that he's blown away and consider your heavens and the work of your fingers. Did you know that God just didn't speak everything into existence? I never knew that. No one ever told me that. God didn't just speak everything into existence. If you read Genesis 1, it says God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and void. Darkness covered the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering then, God said. And if you read the story of creation, God will say, and then he will make. God will say, and then he will make. He will declare, and then he will make. In Hebrews, it says that the Word of God framed the world and the word of God holds the worlds together. Like God, like you, your words can frame your future, but you still gotta build something. You still gotta work. You still gotta make things happen. It's good to declare, but you still gotta work. Side note. Okay, when I see and consider your heavens and the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have established, what is man that you are mindful of him, the son of the earthborn, man that you care for him? Yet you have made him, us, a little lower than God. A little lower than God. And you have crowned him with glory and honor. You made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. In other words, God created the world and he put us in charge of it. You are his highest 
creation. You can operate in two different realms, in two different worlds, and they're the only one that can do it. Angels are spirit. They don't have a body. They can't experience what we can experience because they're just spirit. They may be able to influence us, but they can't experience what we do. Animals are physical, but they can't experience the spiritual. They don't have a spirit. They may or may not be going to heaven. It's a way to divide the church right there. I don't really care if they go to heaven. But you might be two-faced, but you have one assignment to bring heaven to earth. The Bible says whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Two-faced, one assignment, bring heaven to earth. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's called operating in two different worlds. That's called accessing heaven when you're in earth. Two different worlds. So if you're going to do that, if you're going to complete your assignment by orchestrating a collision between heaven and earth, wherever you go, you got to know what heaven's like. Because it says, as it is in heaven, so it shall be on earth. So did you know that there's no sickness or disease or crippling in heaven? Did you know that there's no lack of resources or ideas in heaven? Did you know that heaven is perfect? So... As it is in heaven, so it shall be on earth. There's no addiction in heaven. So if you see something that doesn't line up with heaven, that's your clue to be like, hey, I need to pray. Hey, I need to declare. I need to bring heaven to earth to fix this thing. You have the power to do it. No one else does. And you only have your lifetime to pray that prayer. Once you're in heaven, you're not going to be praying, let heaven come to earth. You're in heaven. You don't need heaven to come to earth. Heaven's already happening in heaven. So you got to know what, as it is in heaven, but you also got to know as he is in heaven. Because the Bible says in 1 John 4, 17, as he is, so are you in this world. So knowing, so knowing who God is isn't going to change God, but knowing who God is or as he is will change you. Because as he is, so are you. So if you think God is powerless or limited, guess what? So are you. If you think God has a lack of resources, so will you. If you, think, you don't think God can bring you a spouse, you won't get a spouse. Because as he is, so are you in this life. So it's a good thing to know as it is and as he is because it'll change the way you pray. It'll change the way you think. It'll change everything for you. So we are, we are two-faced people, the natural and the supernatural. We have to live in this natural world. And we have to be able to understand this natural world world, but we have to be supernatural enough to change the natural world. Yeah. You, you have to be kind of ordinary in some things to fit in, but extraordinary enough to be unrelatable. Yeah. We, we, we talk to people all the time that maybe aren't in our little awakened bubble, <laughs> and they start telling us about things that are impossible. But I know the Bible says that all things are possible. And so when I start to tell them, that's not impossible. It is possible for you to do this. When they're facing the inevitable in their mind, I know that it's not the inevitable. Because my mind isn't on earth, it's in heaven. Sometimes I'm accessing heaven on a different level, so I become unrelatable to them. Because they don't understand why that can't happen, because it seems to be inevitable. So we have to be able to be so... Um, operational in two worlds that we become unrelatable at times to people that are only accessing earth, only accessing the physical. So if all this is really true, if this is Bible, and I'm pretty sure it's been Bible so far, then everything should be possible. We should be unstoppable. There is nothing that can hold up the church from growing and expanding and doing what God's called us to do. The, if, the, if, the, if the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, is really in us, with us, and on us, we are unstoppable. You are unstoppable. You didn't know how powerful you were before you came here today, did you? You didn't know you were the only one that can operate in two worlds. You didn't know you could access heaven when things look bleak on earth. But you can. God set it up that way. And so 
for you and I to access all of what God has or to access the purity and the power of the Holy Spirit, we got to basically get rid of ourselves. The, the, the best way to see the, the pure power of the Holy Spirit is for you and I to get out of the way or to align what we think to what he thinks. So you, you are mind, body, and soul, or spirit, soul, and body. The anchor of your soul is your mind. And so your spirit is perfect. Your spirit thinks rightly. But what happens is your spirit says this, and it gets to your mind. Your mind's like, no way, that's not possible. So then the spirit has to go back down and be captured in your belly. But the spirit of God wants to come out. And so your job and my job is to renew our mind. Don't be conformed to the world, but transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you might know the will of God. So that, the, so that your will lines up with his will and you can release his power in pure form. I, uh, uh, I've had knee issues for, for a little bit. And recently I was introduced to PRP by this gentleman right here. Give us a wave. He heard me talk about it, and he said, hey, there's this treatment that's worked for him, and it's called PRP, platelet-rich plasma. How am I doing? Good? No? (laughs) Platelet-rich plasma is what Google said. (laughs) Platelet-rich plasma is what it means. Platelet-rich plasma plasma. Platelets are in your blood, and platelets are the healing agent in your blood. Plasma is the liquid that that the platelets rest in or that travel in, just like your red blood cells, your white blood cells, different proteins, that sort of thing. They travel in your plasma, so your plasma is the liquid part of your blood. Platelet-rich plasma consists of two elements, plasma, or the liquid portion of your blood, and platelets, the type of blood cell that plays an important role in healing through the body. Platelets are well known for blood clotting abilities, but they also contain growth factors that can trigger cell reproduction and stimulate tissue regeneration or healing in a treated area. So platelet-rich plasma is simply blood that contains more platelets than normal. To create platelet-rich plasma, clinicians take blood, a blood sample from the patient, place it into a device called a centrifuge that rapidly spins the sample, separating out the other components of the blood from the platelets and concentrating them within the plasma. Did y'all get that? Basically, I go to the doctor, they, I show them my very attractive veins that they love, and I say, you're welcome, and they... (laughs) <laughs> they, they, they withdraw blood from me, they put it in these vials, and they put it in that little machine that spins it really fast. While it's spinning really fast, it separates the blood so that the full concentration of the platelets and the plasma is on one side, and all of the elements that don't heal is on the other side. Can I just tell you that you are the plasma that is taking healing to the world. And the greatest way you can observe and see the most potent power of the Holy Spirit is if you separate the blood. John the Baptist said, I must decrease that he would increase. Paul said, let it not be I that live, but Christ that lives in me. The greatest way that we can bring healing to the world is to get rid of all the stuff, is to separate the blood. So we, 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 we deliver to them the most concentrated, potent power of the gospel, power of the Holy Spirit, absent of the stinking thinking and the wrong mindsets and the brokenness. So your job and my job, if we want to see the undiluted power of the Holy Spirit, we got to separate the blood so that we can bring concentrated healing power to every area in our city. Amen? Because here's the idea. My face may get me into a hospital, but his face is going to get you out of the hospital. My face may give me a spouse, but his face is going to keep us together. My face may give me an interview, but his face is going to get me the job. We need to be two-faced. Two-faced. 
But here's the thing that happens in life. The Bible says that, that, that the Word of God will be rendered useless or ununderstandable if the cares of this world overtake you. So sometimes there'll be times in your life where you'll be trying to separate the blood, but you just can't. You got these thinking going on in your mind, you got your past experience, you got your future inevitabilities, and you can't get pure. You can't hear clearly. You can't see what God is seeing. That's why you need people in your life. That's why you need the church. That's why you need connect groups. Recently, we were um, selling our house. And we were, we were in this battle, and, and we had all these offers, and we picked the right offer, we felt like, and, and we were negotiating, and, and, um, and we had come down a little bit to, because of some, some different things that were, that were found. And, and then I told the agent, I said, hey, we'll come to this, but don't come back to me again. We're not negotiating anymore. We're not going to meet in the middle. We're done. And that night, the agent sent us back an offer, a counter offer, agreeing to the price, but then they started asking for our stuff, for our furniture, for flowers on the wall, for potted plants, for all this pool table, for all this stuff. And so I started to go, well, I want to close this thing. I don't really like that table. I could give them the table. Probably not going to take that plant. I could give them the plant. But I didn't want to compromise on price. And then I asked my wife, and she's like, they're not getting my stuff. And so I was like, shoot. Okay. I want to sell this house. I know if I give him a little bit of a win, he's going to close. But if I say no, I don't know. We might lose this deal. And so I love my wife, and I believe my wife, but I had to call Joel Piper's wife, Pastor Dana. <laughs> and I said, Pastor Dana, I'm convoluted. I can't see. I don't know if I'm hearing clearly. I don't want to compromise. My wife doesn't want to compromise, but what do we do? Do we give him anything, or do we just... And because she wasn't in the minutia, in the details, in the numbers, in the negotiations, she was able to separate the blood. She was able to connect purely with heaven. And so as I'm writing the email the next morning to the, to the agent, I was like, wait a second, I got to see, what did God tell Dana? So I, I texted her, I said, hey, what did, what did God say? Did you get anything? And she's like, yeah, I, I couldn't believe it. God sent me to Nehemiah 6, the passion version. It's like he even gives her versions. And this is what, so remember, we're, we're negotiating, and we're like, we're not going to come down. We're not going to negotiate. I've told you this is the price, but do we give them anything? And so she sends back this picture of the verse in the Bible. And you know how, like, different passages of scriptures have titles over them to help us understand? The title above this passage of scripture was it said uh, there it is it said I'm doing a great work I can't come down it's talking about Nehemiah building the wall but that statement just hit me like a ton of bricks because I was in the minutia I couldn't see but because she wasn't she could see and she has a great prayer life but what I'm telling you is the greatest way to live this life is to experience the purity of the Holy Spirit. We are two-faced people, but the reason you have your face is to introduce His face. You would rather be led by the Spirit than led by the flesh. That's the way that we want to live. That's the way we're going to change our city. That's the way you're going to change your family. That's the way we're going to change the United States of America. Wow. What an amazing word. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Hey, listen, for more information about our church, go to www.awakenchurch.com or subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already and download our app. It is amazing. It is chock full of incredible messages, information about upcoming events, and you can even support our ministry if you feel so inclined. We loved having you with us today. We look forward to seeing you again. God bless you. Live a life that is transformative.
Bye for now.